Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hallelujah. Come on now. Look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hallelujah. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, y'all. Hey, as you come into this live, begin to worship God, man. Begin to worship God. This is how I fight my battle. Because that's how you fight your battle, by just giving God the worship. Nisha, what's up? I see you. What's up, sis? What's up, D? Hallelujah. But just by worshiping God, right? It's how you fight your battle. It's how you get the victory. It's how you get the victory. It's how you overcome. Hallelujah. You begin to worship God, y'all. This is how I fight my battles. I don't know about y'all. This is how I fight my battles. I worship. Hallelujah. I give God the glory because he's worthy. You know the Bible say that we overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the word of our testimony. You can't praise God if you don't have a testimony. Like You can't praise God if you don't know he brought you through whatever that was that you was going through. Like You can't praise him. So when the song say, this is how I fight my battles. It's from a real place because I know what God did and it calls me to be grateful. It calls me to be in, 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 in awe of his reverence and, and just in respect of God because of all that he done for me, y'all. So I begin to worship him. Hallelujah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by God. Wow. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man, hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you're so awesome. Hallelujah. Man, as you come in, begin to share this live, begin to praise God, begin to give God the glory, like begin to like worship him for real. If God has been good to you today, give God some glory, like begin to worship him. Turn your house, wherever you at, the job, the car, wherever you might be at, your people in them house, turn it into an altar because God is worthy, y'all. Hallelujah. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. You're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the praise. Uh, you're worthy of the honor. You're worthy of my worship. Hallelujah. Anybody got a mindset? Anybody got their testimony that they can say, Lord, no matter what it looks like, you deserve my worship. No matter what I'm going through, Lord, you deserve my praise. I don't care what I'm up against, but I give you glory, not because of what you can do, but not because of what I need you to do, but because of what you already done. Anybody that good? grateful i mean like grateful grateful for what god can do and what god has done y'all come on now when i think about the goodness of the lord and all that he done for me my soul begins to hallelujah when the when i try to be quiet the word was inside me like a come on y'all like this stuff real this stuff real Come on, y'all. You see what times we living in. We can't sit down on God. You see what's going on in the land. We can't be quiet. You see what's going on. We got to give God our worship. We can't hold back our praise from this awesome and amazing God. For he is worthy to be lifted up from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. I will praise the Lord at all times. And his praise, hallelujah, to continually be in my mouth. If I had 10,000 tongues. I still couldn't praise him enough. Anybody, anybody catching on to it yet? Anybody catching on to it yet? Anybody, anybody's spirit is resonating with what I'm saying because the Bible says in the book of Psalms that King Jesus is the lover of my soul, y'all. He's the lover of my soul. He's the lover of my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, y'all. He's the lover of my soul, y'all. Is he the lover of your soul tonight? I, be, I dare you to just begin to worship him. 
Because as you worship God and you find yourself going through situations, as you worship God, you're fighting. As you worship God, you're fighting your battles. As you worship God, as you worship God, you're fighting in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Because God don't require us to fight. He just requires us to worship. And as we worship and as we sit still and we hold our peace, the Bible said that the Lord begins to fight on our behalf. The Bible said that the Lord begins to come on. He begins to turn some things around, y'all, as we worship, as we worship, though, as we worship, though. I can testify that my marriage was on the downhill, but as I worship, I can testify that my child was acting up. But as I worship, I can testify that my money was looking kind of funny, but oh, as I worship. God. I can testify that I was going through depression and my mind was kind of losing me and my peace was kind of trying to leave but as I worshipped woo, no weapon for him y'all. Man I feel the Holy Ghost Hallelujah no weapon formed against the children of God shall be able to prosper tonight. I speak it into the atmosphere. I decree and declare that all of us are walking in victory tonight in Jesus' name. I don't care what the enemy threw at you. I don't care what it looked like. The woman of God just spoke. She said it won't work. I dare you to type it in tonight, devil. It did not work. See, you tried to stop me from getting on this live tonight. Yes, you did. See, you tried to stop me from getting on Facebook tonight. You tried to stop Stop me from getting on Instagram tonight and hearing what does said the Lord, but it didn't work. You tried to stop me from praising this amazing God that I serve, uh, but it didn't work. You tried to make me lose my mind, but it did not work. You tried to make me doubt this all-knowing, this almighty, this all-powerful, this all-able God, but it did not work. Hallelujah. You tried to make me give up on my marriage, but it did not work. Anybody can testify. Come on now. Nah. Come on now. Nah. Woo! You tried to make me leave the presence. You tried to make me leave his will. But it didn't work. No weapon formed against the children of God shall be able to prosper, y'all. We just gonna worship. Because when we worship, we set the atmosphere. We set the atmosphere for the word to penetrate our hearts, y'all. Hallelujah. God would do exactly what he said he'll do, y'all. Come on, y'all. He gonna stand by his word, y'all. He gonna stand by his word. Woo! Woo! Woo, y'all. See, it's one thing when you waiting on the promise of God, but it's another thing when you know he that came through. It hit different. See, your worship hit different when you look at that thing that you was asking God for. And now if you see that thing that manifested in your life, so it hit a little different because now you know that God is able. Now you know that God is going to stand by his word. Now you know that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power. Woo! Anybody been waiting on something from God, but then when that thing come through, it just, it just yeah, it just do something to you. Speak the word. Speak the word. Come on, testify, saints of God. Testify. 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 I need somebody to testify that God is good. If you know he did it. If you know you was waiting on it. If you know you have spectators telling you, you need to go and let that go. You need to stop worrying about that. That ain't going to happen. But oh, when God show up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. See, we got to learn how to be loud. We got to learn how to shout it up to the mountaintops. We got to learn to do that. Because when we're waiting, the devil, he talking loud. He talking loud. He trying to make us doubt. He, he talking loud in our ear. Just curse him and die. Just let it go. Don't believe that. That ain't go. He talking real loud. So now it's your turn. If you know God to manifest that thing, God. Say it's my turn. Let me tell you something now. Hallelujah. Woo! I feel a Holy Ghost. I feel a Holy Ghost, y'all. I feel a Holy Ghost. Wait, wait until we get into this word. It's so amazing. God is so amazing, y'all. Anybody know him as Emmanuel? Anybody know him as Emmanuel? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Man, I miss y'all, bro. Hallelujah. Man, God is so good. Hallelujah. God is so good, y'all. In spite of, God is good, y'all. 
God is so good. When I tell y'all God is so good, when I find myself going through all of this spiritual warfare and all of these attacks and all of this stuff, y'all, getting locked out my page, getting my character slandered, getting my reputation slandered, going through all of this stuff, going through all of these changes, I am so at peace and so full of joy because what the devil tried to do to steal my worship, it didn't work. So when I say that God is able to do it, I say it from a real place. When I lift up my hands, I lift them up not out of routine, but out of surrenderance. But out of acknowledgement that God, hallelujah, nobody but God. Woo, y'all. Let's get into this word. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> it won't work. It won't work. Woo, it won't work. 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 Devil, I come to serve you. Notice tonight that what you're trying to do, it will not work. It will not work. It will not work. Ha! Ha! It will not work. Come on, somebody. Celebrate God tonight because it will not work. Celebrate your victory tonight because it will not work work. I promise you. I promise you it will not work. I can't promise you that it's not going to come, but I promise you it will not work. I promise you. I promise you. Come on. Man, I love that woman of God. She take me there, y'all. We finna get into this word, man. Hallelujah. So I'm about to pray in. I'm about to pray in, y'all. I was looking for my wife. I don't see her yet. Somebody text my wife, tell her get her butt on one of these lines right now. I need, I need my rib, y'all. I feel, I feel, I feel like I can go to the moon with my rib on my side. Hallelujah. How my sound, y'all? That, that 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 worship instrument ain't too loud in the background, huh? If it is, I'll turn it down. But I'm about to pray, y'all. I'm about to pray. We finna get into this word, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I just thank you, Lord God, for your, your goodness, Lord, your faithfulness. Lord God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that we are not perfect, Father God, but yet you love us the same. Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, because I can't sit here on this live and act like, Father God, I've never been in a place, Lord God, that caused me to doubt you. Or not, or not believe, Lord God, that you were able to do a certain thing that I needed you to do. But Lord, in spite of the doubt, in spite of the insecurities, Lord God, and the anxiety and the fear, Father God, your love for me never changed. Your opinion for us never changed, Lord God. And Lord God, when you went to the cross, Lord God, you looked at us, Father God, and you said we are worth it, Father. So I thank you tonight. That you said, Lord God, that we are worth it. So, Father God, we carry ourselves knowing our worth, Father. For we are, Lord God, children of the Most High God. We are kings and queens. We are your sons and your daughters, Lord. Father, I ask you to just have your way tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, open our ears, Lord God, and anoint our minds, Lord God, to receive revelation from heaven tonight, Lord God. Lord God, for your word declares, Lord, that your ways are higher than ours, Lord, and our human minds are not able, Lord God, are not capable enough, Lord God, to, to, to fathom, Lord God, or to wrap our heads around your infinite wisdom unless you anoint us, so anoint our minds, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every distraction, Lord, is dismantled, is destroyed, is cast down. Every attack is being reversed into the kingdom of darkness. Lord, scatter the enemy right now in the name of Jesus in his camp. Send down fire, Lord. Send down, Lord God, confusion on the camp of the enemy, Lord. Father, I thank you right now that you're getting ready to do something, Father God, that's miraculous, Lord God, that you're getting ready to do something, Lord God, that we can't even put into words. And I just thank you, Lord, because, Lord, it's not about me, but it's all about you and you get the glory, Father. So, Lord God, I decrease so that you may increase. Father, my prayer is that the people won't not see me, Lord, but they will see you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Because it's not by might or power, but it's by your spirit, Father. Let your spirit reign on these lives. 
Let your spirit invade our hearts. Let your spirit invade our homes, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Your will be done tonight. Your will be done tonight, Lord. Lord, I don't step to the left or the right. Lord, I don't speak out of a place of flesh, out of a place of emotions. Father, but I desire to stay in your flow and sync with your Holy Spirit. Speak those things concerning your people. Let us be edified. Let us be encouraged. Let us be reassured. Let us be refreshed. Let us be revived. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Woo! Hallelujah. Y'all, we're going to talk about tonight knowing God as Emmanuel, right? We hear so many names when we're talking about God. We hear so many names, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. We hear people call him Yahweh, Yeshua. We hear people call him Jesus. We hear all of these different names. And one day, y'all, I was in prayer and I was just seeking the Lord concerning everything that was going on in my life. And he gave me this word. He gave me this word right before a lot of a lot of the trials that I find myself in now, a lot of this, the tribulations that I find myself in now. Hey, they're going to wipe it. They're going to wipe it. I'm about to preach this thing. Now, nah, y'all, wipe it in the building. But he gave me this word, y'all, right before all of this stuff broke out. And I understand, just me personally, this is how God deal with me. When God give me a word, he do not allow me to release it unto his people until he take me through a season of experiencing what it is that he just poured out to me. So I knew that something was coming up because God said, know me as Emmanuel, because I love to call the name Jesus. I always call the name, and I just be like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sometimes when I'm in worship and God said, know me as Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm trying to contain myself, y'all. Hallelujah. So we go, we go, we just gonna know God on 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 an intimate level tonight. If if that's okay with y'all, I'm gonna try not to get excited because I want y'all to receive this. We just gonna know God as Emmanuel tonight. Hallelujah. Please be patient with me, y'all. We just gonna know him as Emmanuel. <laughs> so this is what it say, Matthew chapter one. Verse 23, and I'm reading from the Amplified Virgin, y'all. Some of these are Amplified. Some of these are King James Virgin. So uh, just take the scripture down and then whatever version you, you, you use to, you know, help you get a better understanding of the word of God, use that. Compare the notes. But Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, let's go. This is what it says. It says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and give birth to a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which when translated means God with us. I need somebody to type that. What does Emmanuel mean? I need somebody to type it. I need some interaction tonight because I need to know that y'all are getting this. Like, I, I don't want to just, I just, I don't want to just minister this word and this word go to the wayside. What does the name Emmanuel mean? I need one person to type it. Just one. If one person type it, we're going to move on. Hallelujah. What does the name Emmanuel mean, y'all? Just one. That's all I need. God with us. God with us. So tonight, the message is knowing God as Emmanuel. And what God is trying to get across to the body in this time, in this trying season, with all of this stuff going on, is he is with us. Can I say that again? God is with us. And some of us, we are going through some things, y'all. And some of these seasons that we find ourselves being transitioned into, they are new. They're unknown. We don't know what the end results are. Some of this stuff is just coming from left to right. And we don't know what the heck is going on. But it seems like this is hitting me from this way. And that hit me from this way. And... And then when I go home, it's like this is going on. And then when I try to do this, it's like it go like this for a little while. And then this go on. I'm taking three steps forward. And then it's like I'm taking two back. It's like I'm trying to get through this door. But then this door is opening. And then as soon as I try to walk through it, it's closing on me. Like, God, what is going on? 
And God said, in this season, there is a lot of unsurety in the body of Christ. There is a lot of wonder in the body of Christ. And when God spoke this to me, help me, Holy Ghost, it made me understand, y'all, what God said in the word when he said that in the last days, there shall be a great falling away. In the last days, there should be a great falling away from the church, from the, from the body of Christ. It made me understand it. And God said that people are going to have itchy ears where they're not going to be able to endure sound doctrine. And it made me understand it because God said right now in this season, in the body of Christ, is so much curiosity. It's so much wondering going on. It's so much unsurety going on. Because people don't know what's next. And if we be honest, people are not reading the word of God like they should. So they don't know what the word says containing this season. But God said, let my people know tonight. Hallelujah. That I am Emmanuel, which means that I am with you. And the reason why God is making me emphasize this so much, so much, is because we're in a time where it's not it's not more important to know what's going on, but it's way more important to know who's in control. Can I say that one more time? We are in a time where it's more important to know who's in control than it is to know what exactly is going on. Hallelujah. I'm a priest to y'all tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. It says, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Do not fear or be dismayed. It says, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Do not fear or be dismayed. And if there's anybody watching this live tonight, if you can be, if you can be honest enough to say, hey God, I find myself fearful at times because I see what's going on. I see this vaccine. I, I see Lenar's ex with Satan's shoes. I, I see all of this stuff going on. I see these trials that I'm finding. My, I find myself fearful at times. If you can be honest with yourself, God said, the spirit of the Lord said, I am going to deliver you tonight. Woo! But you have to be real. It says, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail or abandon you. Do not fear, be dismayed. We find ourselves going through, sometimes we go through seasons that are unknown. And because they are unknown to us, we begin to doubt. We begin to fear. But I need you to understand that this God named Emmanuel has already went before you. He has went before you. He has went before you. He has already prepared a trail for you. Y'all ever been in the woods? You ever walked in the woods and seen that there was already a trail mapped out? And all you had to do was follow that little trail, trail, follow that little pathway. And when you followed that little pathway that you found in the woods, it brought you out of the woods to, to the other side. It brought you back to the back, back to the real world. And you're like, look, there go a trail. Let's use this trail. It is the same way with God. It's the same way with God. The Bible said that the spirit of the Lord has went before us. So when we find ourselves in this unknown territory, we have to understand that we have a God who has already went ahead of us and prepared a way for us. So though it may be unknown to us, God already knows what the end result is. For the Bible declares in Jeremiah 29 and 11 that he knows the plans that he has for us to bring us to prosperous, prosperous heights, not to harm us, but to give us an expected end. Meaning that God already know what the end is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see you over there self-made. I see you. Hallelujah. Your transparency is going to get you delivered and free tonight. Receive that by faith. But it's God who go before us. Watch this. Keep that in mind. God said, 
I will go before you. Keep that in mind. I'm about to show y'all something in scripture. God said, I will go before you. I will go before you. I will go before you. Watch this. Matthew 14, verses 22 through 25. It says, immediately he directed the disciples to get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he sent the crowds away. It says, after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And it says, when it was evening, he was there alone. It says, but the boat by this time was already a long distance from the land, tossed and battered by the waves, for the wind was against them. And then it says in 25, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. So let me break this story down. Jesus told his disciples, he said, listen, I got some stuff to do because Jesus was performing so many miracles. See, the people back in the day, they weren't crazy like we was. When God was performing them miracles, and doing all of this stuff and healing their bodies and doing all of this stuff. They was like, look, we're going to follow this dude. Like, we ain't, look, we forget going home. Forget watching Netflix. Forget going to work. Like, this dude right here, this dude is a mate. We're going to follow this dude wherever he go. Forget all that other stuff. That's how they was. That's how they was. But they didn't want Jesus. They just wanted the miracles. They just wanted the manifestations. They just wanted the stuff that he was doing. So Jesus said, told his disciples, he said, look, y'all go on over. Go get on the boat. Y'all go on over to the other side. I'm going to get rid of this crowd right here. Y'all go head over. Y'all go head over. I'm going to get rid of this crowd. So the Bible say that, you know, Jesus got rid of the crowd. But then when Jesus got rid of the crowd, he ain't getting no boat and go, go catch up with them. The Bible said that Jesus went to the mountaintop and he began to pray. And the Bible says that about this time, after he did all that, the boat had to be way gone. Because, you know, when Jesus prayed, Jesus was praying. So the boat was way gone already. And the Bible says that the boat was in the middle of a storm being tossed by the waves and being battered by what was going on. Right? All of that stuff was going on, right? But notice this. When the disciples was in the boat and all of that stuff was going on, Jesus put the crowd away. Jesus went to the mountaintop and he prayed. He did all of this stuff knowing that the disciples was running into a storm. But Jesus ain't stopped. He ain't hurried to them. He did what he had to do. And the Bible said that the boat had been gone for a long time already before Jesus even decided to head that direction. The boat had already been gone. But some way, somehow, in the scripture, Jesus met them right exactly where they was. Jesus to put a crowd away. Jesus to went to the mountaintop. Jesus to pray. They already been sailing for probably hours. And somehow, some way, Jesus, all Jesus met them exactly where they was. Can I help somebody tonight? Because remember, I just told you that the Bible says that God goes before us. He goes before us. And then the Bible turned around and said that Jesus met them right there. Okay, He came right to the boat walking on the water. How is that possible? The Holy Spirit said, Jarvis, I wasn't on my way there. I was already there. See, some of us, we find ourselves in, can I say that one more time? Let me slow, because I need you to catch this. The Holy Spirit said, Jarvis, I wasn't on my way there. I was already there. I was already there. Because we serve a God who's so great. We serve a God who looks high and low. We serve a God who is omnipresent so he can be on the mountaintop praying and he can be in, in, the, in the midst of the storm with the disciples. He can be putting a crowd away and he can be in the water waiting on his disciples to come. He can be in all of these places at once. And sometimes we find ourselves, right? 
We find ourselves in situations. We find ourselves in trials, Tatanya. We find ourselves in, 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 in these tribulations, y'all. And this is where religion tells us. They say, just hold on. Help is on the way. Hold on. God is on the way. But can I educate you? That God ain't on the way. He already there. God is not on the way. He's already there. He's already there. He's already there. You're going through a trial right now and you're waiting on God to show up. He's already there. You're going through a tribulation and hardship right now and you're waiting on God to show up. You wait on God to come on the scene, but God is already there. Why? Because the Bible says that he goes before us. He won't leave us. He won't forsake us. We don't have to feel. We don't have to be dismayed, y'all, because he's already there. See, y'all probably think, man, Jarvis just talking. I'm going to prove it to you in scripture. I'm telling you. I'm about to prove it to you in scripture. But God is already there. Woo! God is already there. How do I know this? How do I know this? Let me give you an example that I ain't even got on here. This is just the Holy Spirit speaking. When the three Hebrew boys was getting ready to be cast in the fire, the Bible says that the Spirit of God goes before us. And when they got thrown into the fire, it was somebody testimony that said, I thought you threw three boys in the fire. Why do I see four? And one looked like the son of God. Because before the three Hebrew boys got in the fire, God was already in there with them. He didn't have to show up on the scene. He was in the furnace before they even decided they was going to stand. He was in the furnace before they even decided to push them in. He was in the furnace while they was heating it up. God was in the furnace. God was in the furnace while they was heating up the furnace. Talk to me. God was in the furnace while they was trying to put these clothes on them to make it hotter for them. Uh, God was in the furnace before they even walked down there to where the furnace was. Uh, God already be on the scene. God already be in the trial before you get to it. God be in the storm before you get to it. Woo! God be in that season of depression before you even get to it. God be in that season of confusion and unsurety and insecurities and fear and doubt. He be all of you already be there. He already be there. He already be there. Let me, I'm trying to help somebody. Watch this. Watch this. Can I say this? Can I say this real quick? Can I say this real quick? Watch this. Watch this. So here they are on this boat, right? And the storm is going on, right? I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. And they on the storm, right? They in the boat. They on the storm, right? And then here come Jesus. He come walking on the water, right? And when he walks on the water, Peter looks at him. They everybody get everybody get scared because they like, oh no, that's a ghost. Jesus said, no, this ain't no ghost. This me. So Peter said, God, if that's you. Bid me to come out on the water, right? So God said, all right, come out on the water. Peter, get out the boat. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Out of the boat. They in a storm. They in a storm. It's raging winds. It's violent waves. It's lightning and it's thundering. Peter gets out the boat. He starts to walk on water. He starts to walk to God. But then the Bible says this right here. Hallelujah. The Bible says that as Peter was walking towards God, the storms began to get more louder. They began to get more violent. Peter looked at the storm and he began to sink. When he began to sink, God lifted up his hand, extended his hand because Peter hollered, save me, save me. He grabbed a man's hand. He said, Peter, why are you of little faith? Why are you a little faith? I need y'all to get this. I need y'all to get this right here. This is what God said. This is what God said. God said, they was walking out the boat, right? And the reason why Peter began to sink is because he started looking at the situation, right? We all know that, right? He started looking at his situation. And this is what God said. 
He said, Jarvis, the storm that was surrounding him, the circumstances that was around him gave off an illusion of danger. I'm going to say that one more time. The circumstances around him gave off an illusion of danger. It gave off an illusion of danger. But God said, Peter was aware before that happened. Peter was aware that safety was on the scene. Anybody seen that in that story? When you read that story, did you know that Peter was aware that his safety was on the scene? Did you know that Peter was aware that his help had arrived? Y'all don't believe me? He said, God, if that be you, bid me to come out the water, right? And he began to do what? Run towards Jesus, right? What does the Bible say? The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and they are safe. Peter was aware that safety had arrived on the scene so he began to run towards his safety because he knew that Jesus was there. He knew that the name of the Lord was a strong tower and though this storm is going on, if I could just run in to where Jesus is, I would be safe. But because he looked at the storm and it gave off an illusion of danger, he forgot that safety was on the scene. Some of us, we are going through trials, right? Some of us, we are going through situations, right? And it's giving off a false illusion of defeat. It's giving off a false delusion of no hope. It's giving off a false delusion of death. It's giving off a false delusion of ain't no way can be made. It is giving it off so much that we have forgot that safety is already on the scene. We have forgot that the provider is already on the scene. We are forgetting that the way maker is already on the scene. See, we, we go to the doctor and the doctor give us a report that hey, ain't nothing else we can do for him. Ain't nothing else we, we can tr we done tried everything. We done tried everything. And we believe their illusion. We, will be we believe their report so much that we forget that the healer is already on the scene. That's why the Bible said this. He said, whose report shall you believe? Because I heard it broke down like this. They say fear is false evidence appearing real. Somebody put that in the comments. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Fear is false evidence appearing real. That's all fear is. Fear is false evidence appearing real. So when we find ourselves in a fearful state, when we find ourselves being afraid of something, the fact of the matter is, we don't believe some false evidence. We don't receive some false evidence as truth. We don't receive the lie as the truth. That's why we're fearful. That's why we're fearful. That's why. When the, and I'm so tired of I'm so tired of talking about the pandemic, y'all. But that's why when the pandemic broke out and the news was going crazy, you had some people believing what the news said, and then you had some people who trusted in God quoting Psalms 91, and they had peace because fear is false evidence appearing real. So Peter was aware that safety was on the scene. The name of the Lord is scrolled to all the righteous run in, and they are saved. They are safe. Peter was aware that the safety was on the scene. He began to run to it. But then when the storm got to coming down and he ended up looking up, he ended up looking up. It gave off an illusion of danger and he began to fear because he received false evidence as truth. Come on, somebody. Don't allow what you're going through. Hallelujah. Don't receive. Can I tell somebody this? Don't receive your season as truth. Because a season is just what it is. It's a season. It's there for a moment, then it's gone. Don't receive your reality as your truth. God said we walk by faith, not by sight. Don't receive 
your reality as your truth because what you're struggling with right now that's not you what you keep falling victim to that's not you you are a child of god do you hear me self-made what you find yourself struggling with right now that's not you what you keep giving in to that ain't you that's not the real you you are a queen you are a child of the most high god the bible say that in the last days that the lord will pour out his spirit upon our flesh you have the spirit of god on you come on now come on now you are not who your situation is. You are not who you are at this moment. That's not you. You falling short is not you. You struggling with this. That's not you. You being in doubt and fear. That's not you. Don't receive it as truth. You have to go to the Lord and say, I am who you say I am, Lord. Let me keep going, y'all. Mark chapter 4, verse 35, verse 41. Y'all believe me that Jesus, that Jesus was already there? I'm about to show y'all. I told y'all I was going to show y'all the scripture. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. Talking about Jesus. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm, right, of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the, the back part of the ship asleep on the pillow talking about Jesus and they awake Jesus they went to Jesus and they woke him up right and this is what they said they said unto him they said master do you care that we finna die and Jesus arose he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are ye so fearful how is it that you have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said one to another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him so here's another story right but this time Jesus is actually in the boat when they go into this storm but Jesus in the back sleep. He in the back sleep. He tired. You know how when you pull out to somebody or you just be working and you be doing all this stuff, you be ripping and running out. Jesus was about his father's business. Jesus was riding a donkey everywhere he went. Jesus was not riding a horse everywhere he went. And they show ain't have no Impalas, no Camaros, and no Mustangs back then. So Jesus walked everywhere he went. And the Bible says Jesus was walking city to city, performing miracles, telling people about the gospel, doing all of this stuff. That man was tired. He was tired, y'all. So he in the back sleep. He tired. He been walking all day, doing miracles all day. He tired. He got people coming at him talking about he the devil and all he doing is happy for. He tired. He tired. He been arguing with the Pharisees. He tired. He in the back. He knocked out. He sleep. They in the storm. The storm getting violent. It's looking real. It's looking like they finna die. They say, hey, go wake Jesus up. And if and if it was black disciples, man, what's wrong with this dude, man? Sleep, man. He see us finna. What's wrong with this dude? He over there asleep. And we over here finna die. Go wake that boy up. So they went to Jesus. They woke him up. They nudged him. Jesus peeked. What's up with y'all? They said, you don't care, we finna die? And Jesus spoke to the wind. He said, peace be still. Then he asked them, why are they of little fear? This is how I know that God already be in our situations. Watch this. I need y'all to catch this. They was in fear, right? They was in fear. But the Lord was over there sleeping peacefully. Peacefully peacefully the Lord was over there sleeping peacefully and they was in fear wait a minute wait a minute y'all they was on the same boat they was in the same storm they was in the same circumstance Jesus over there sleep peacefully they over here awake and they fearful right this is what God said. So God arose 
and he looked at the wind, he rebuked the wind, and then he said, peace be still. He said, peace be still, because the people on the boat was losing their minds. He said, peace be still, because these people ain't had no peace. They peace was slipping away from them because of what they was going through. How many can say, Lord, I'm going through some things and it seems like I'm finna lose my entire mind. Peace be still in the name of Jesus. It seems like my, my peace is trying to run away from me. It seems like my joy is just trying to run away from me. Peace be still in the name of Jesus. But that ain't even the deepest part about it though, right? So this is what God said. God, I said, God, you had peace, right? But they was fearful. God said, Jarvis, he said, they could have had the same peace. Because I was on the boat. They could have had the same peace if they would have trusted in me. They could have had the same peace. But watch this. This is what God said. God said, it's, 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 y'all, this is so, this is so deep right here. God said, they was on the same boat. I was in that same vicinity. We was all in the, on there together. But because they didn't know that I was able to do certain things, because they didn't put their faith in me, because they just didn't rely on me, they didn't have the peace that comes with that. And this is what God said. Because they were so focused on losing their life, they was afraid. They could not experience the peace of God. Even though Jesus was right there on the boat, exemplifying peace, exemplifying peace, demonstrating peace, they were not able to receive it. It is possible for God to already be in a situation with you and you not experience the characteristics of God. And you know why? Because when you're so focused on your life and the cares of life like these people was, you don't acknowledge God for who he is. And God told me to tell the people, he said, don't allow the cares of life and the things that you are going through to make you immune to the presence of God. What does that mean? What does that look like? You ever went to church, right? Or, or wherever the spirit of God is, wherever. However you feel God's presence, whether you listening to a certain song that make you just go up every time, whether it's you talking to your friends and it make you go up every time, whether you go to this church and y'all church service be lit and it make you turn up every time, right? And you feel that. You're flowing with that. But when light get to hit you and you're so focused on how this bill gonna get paid, how I'm gonna get out this trial, when, when you play that song now, you don't go up like you used to. What changed about the song? Did nothing change about the song? The lyrics didn't change about the song. The person singing the song didn't change. The beat about the song didn't change. What changed? When you go to church and you normally can tap in and now you're in the service and they doing the same things they was doing the other Sunday that you was allowed to get your praise on but now because you're so focused on what you're going through and you go to this service and you don't feel it, what happened? What changed? They didn't change. They didn't do nothing different. What happened was when you find yourself so focused on what you're going through it makes you immune to the presence of God. When you go through stuff, it makes you immune to the presence of God. If you focus on what you're going through, you become immune to the presence of God. When you become immune, look, look what the definition of immune means. The definition of immune means not affected or influenced by something. To be immune means to not be affected or influenced by something. So when you're going through a trial and you're so focused on, oh, I'm going through this, oh, I'm going through that, and you become immune to the presence of God, that means you are no longer affected by the presence of God being there. You're no longer influenced by God being there. And so you're, causing, you're, you're finding yourself in chaos. 
That's the same thing happened with the disciples. He was right there on the boat with them. But because they became immune to the presence of God, it was no effect that God be that God was there. It didn't affect them that God was there. It, died, it did not influence them that God was there. So some of us, we feel like, man, God ain't here. God ain't showed up. God is already there. But you are not affected by his presence. Woo! Hey, you are not being affected by God's presence. The peace of God cannot affect you. The joy of God cannot affect you. The rest of God cannot affect you. The presence of God cannot influence you because you're so wrapped up in what you're going through. My wife hate this about me sometimes, y'all. Sometimes I be on my phone and my wife be talking to me and she be like, yeah, baby, you know, she be talking and I be listening, but I'm still focusing on this thing in my phone. And then when I get so focused on it, after a while, I'm going to drown my wife out. And then I look up and I be like, babe, what you said? And she gets so mad. She gets so mad. Anybody ever did that to somebody? They talking to you. You was listening at first. But then as you find yourself more consumed than what it is that you're looking at, as you find yourself more consumed than what it is that you're doing or what you're trying to do, then when that voice is speaking to you, when that person is talking to you, you end up drowning it out. You ended up not even getting what they're saying. And then you're looking up like, what you said again? It is the same way that we do God, y'all. When we focus on our trials, we tune out the voice of God we can't hear God. And then we're constantly saying, speak, Lord, speak, Lord, speak, Lord. But we're focusing on the trial. And every time he speak, we, we're so focused in, we can't hear his voice. And then we're looking up and we're like, God, speak, Lord, speak to me, speak to me, talk to me, tell me something. And then as soon as he get to speaking, here we go again. Well, oh, Lord, you see that bill? Oh, Lord, ain't no way this light bill should be that high. It was 136 high and go up to 300. What's going on? Oh, Lord, ain't no way this insurance should be this high. Oh, Lord, how I'm going to get the money for this? How I'm going to get the money? And the Lord trying to speak. But your focus ain't right. So God is it's capable, it's possible. And I need y'all to understand this because y'all ain't gonna act like my God ain't showing up for you. You ain't gonna act like my God to left you or forsake you. No, no, no. The Lord is right there with you. The Bible said that the Lord go before you. The Lord is there before you get there, baby. But you can't experience God because you focus on the trial. So it don't even matter that he there because you are mule to his presence. And I have to pray and I have to ask God I say, God, please don't allow the cares of life to make me immune to your presence. Forgive me if I allow the cares of life and the things concerning this day and time make me immune to your presence. Can I give y'all an example? How many of us can honestly say we'd have been around somebody that had COVID-19, COVID-19, and we never got it? How many can say that we have came in contact with people who struggled, who were strict, who were struck with coronavirus and we ended up not getting it, even though we was around it? You can't tell me that you can't be around something and not get it. It's possible. You can be in the presence of God. God can be right there in your face. The Bible even say that when Jesus was manifested in the flesh, he came down and he was speaking to the people, doing all of these miracles, and they still couldn't understand. They still couldn't get it. They still couldn't grasp that God was right there. They still couldn't get it. You feel me? They still couldn't get that God was right there in their face, y'all. So it's possible. 
Just like it's possible to be around somebody who got COVID-19 and not get it, it's possible to be around the presence of God and not receive breakthrough. It's possible to be in the presence of God and not receive peace. It's possible for God to be present and you not to receive joy. It's all about you. You have to choose to receive these things, y'all. Because what the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And when there's liberty, you can be free to give all your cares to Him. You can be free to worship God. You can be free to go on about your life. You can be free to lay this stuff at His feet and not worry about it again. You can be free. But you have to receive His Spirit. Hey, y'all, I'm finna, I'm finna get ready to get off here. I gotta give y'all this, though. Ooh, this right here, man. This blessed my life, y'all. I cried so much when the Lord spoke this to me. And it was to me personally. And I said, I'm gonna share this with... I'm gonna share this. I'm gonna put this in this message for the people to hear it. Hallelujah. But before we get to that, watch this. Before we get to that point, watch this. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 through 18, it says, The servant of the man of God got up early... And went out, and behold, there was an army with horses and chariots encircling the city. Elisha's servant said unto him, Oh no, my master, what are we to do? Elijah answered, Do not be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elijah prayed and said, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. Facebook, y'all with me? Y'all can hear me? She say I'm skipping. Hold on, y'all. I need, I need to make sure they. I'm, I need to make sure they get this. Y'all, y'all with me? I'm skipping. I'm good. Let me know some. Let me know some. I'm skipping. I'm good. I'm great. Hallelujah, Lord. Touch the airways. Touch the airways. In Jesus' name. I'm good on Instagram. Y'all, let me know some. All right, they say I'm good. All right. 2 Kings chapter 6, 15 through 18. I'm going to read it one more time. It said, The servant of the man of God got up early and went out, and behold, there was an army with horses and chariots encircling the city. Elijah's servant said unto him, Oh no, my master, what are we to do? Elijah answered, Do not be afraid. Watch this, y'all. So they get ready. They get ready to go into battle, right? They get ready to go into battle. So the prophet Elijah, Elisha, he step outside and he see the enemies, armies. He see all of these chariots. He see all of these horses on the ride. They on they, they on their way to him. And he like, what we gonna do? Cause they was ready, right? So this was this was his response. He said, he answered and said, Do not be afraid. For those who are with us. Or more than those who are with them. Then Elijah prayed and said, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes. And when the Lord opened the servant's eyes, he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire surrounding them. So here they are, Elijah and his servant, getting ready to go into battle. And when they step out, when the servant stepped out, he seen all of these chariots, he seen all of these horses coming their way. And it looked like they was outnumbered. So he began to panic. And then he go to Elijah, he said, listen, oh no, what are we going to do? It's a lot of them. And Elijah said, look, don't be afraid. Because it's greater is those who are with us than those that are with them. So the servant, like, what is you talking about? Ain't a lot of us. And Elijah prayed. He said, Lord, open up his eyes so that he may see. And when the Lord opened up his eyes, he looked around. And this time his sight was different. Before he could see nobody with them, but the number that he saw at first. But after Elijah prayed that prayer, he looked up and he saw, he saw horses. He saw chariots of fire. He saw angels. He saw the army from heaven in their corner ready to do battle with them. And then it says this, y'all. It says, 
when Elijah saw that and the people began to come down trying to attack, Elijah began to pray to the Lord and said, please strike these people down with blindness. And it says that God struck them down with blindness. And this is what we have to understand. That though it look like you are outnumbered, you have to understand that there is a whole army in the heaven that's fighting on your behalf. We are talking about knowing God as Emmanuel, God with us. We have to understand that it's greater than what I can see. My reinforcement is greater than what I can see. Sometimes we get so caught up in this natural world, we have to ask God, God, give me spiritual eyes to see in the spirit. Because in the natural, it looking like, it's looking like I'm finna get my butt kicked. But oh, if you just open up my eyes. See, that's what, it, that's what we have to understand that in the natural, it can look like you're finna be defeated. In the natural, it can look like you're outnumbered. But you have to ask God, God, give me eyes to see in the spirit. Because if you see in the spirit, you will see that there is thousands of angels. There's thousands of angels at your side. There's a thousands of angels at your service. There's an army that the Lord sends to fight on your behalf. And this army right here, they're undefeated. This army right here is what the Bible talks about when it talked about how the Lord, the devil, and the Lord begin to battle because the devil began to be rebellious and, and, and talks about how they got the victory. It was the angels. It was the angels that put them out of heaven. Can I talk to somebody tonight? It was the angels that put the devil and those rebellious angels out of heaven. And that same army. That fought that fought and won. It's the same army that's fighting for you. The same army. So when it's time to go into battle, you don't have to be afraid. When it's time to go into war, you don't have to be afraid. When you find yourself going through these trying times, you don't have to be afraid. You have to ask God, Lord, open up my eyes. I need to be able to see. Lord, give me eyes to see. Lord, give me the mind to know that it's greater than what I see. It's greater than what it looks like. Hallelujah. But watch this though. It said that once Elijah realized that it was a whole army of angels around him, it says the next thing he did was he gave God an order. He said, God, strike these people with blindness. And the Bible says that God struck those people with blindness. See, when you realize that you have backup, when you realize that you have the upper hand, when you realize that all of kingdom's power is on your side, when you realize that all of the power of the kingdom is working for your good, that's why all things work together. For When you realize that all of this stuff is working for your favor, you begin to get bold and you begin to ask God for stuff. See, when you're walking in the spirit of defeat, you don't like to ask God for nothing. When you're walking in the spirit of defeat, you, defeat, you like to tuck your tail and, you know, put your head down. But God said, no, be bold. Don't feel this, be, this or be dismayed because I am with you. Isaiah, 50, for, Isaiah 45 and 11 says, For the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and His Maker says this, Ask me about the things to come or concerning my sons. Watch this. This is what the Lord said. He said, ask me about the things that are to come concerning my sons. Watch this. He's, this is what the Lord is saying, y'all. This is what God is saying. He said, ask me about the things that are to come. And then he said, give me orders. Give me orders concerning the work of my hands. Hold on. <laughs> I need y'all to get this in the spirit. I need y'all to get this in the spirit. I promise you, if you get this, it's going to bless your life. He said, he told them, he said, ask me about the things that are to come. And then he told them, he said, give me orders. When Elijah realized who was on his side, 
he gave God an order. And the Bible said that God struck those people with blindness. Just the way that he ordered God to do. We have to understand that it's life and it's death in our tongue, y'all. And when we find ourselves going through these situations, when we find ourselves going through these trials, we have to stop allowing the enemy to silence us. It's one thing to be all loud and bold for Christ when everything is good, but you got to keep that same energy when you find yourself going through it. Because that's when it counts the most. And I don't judge nobody, y'all. It's not a judging spirit that I have when I see saints don't. But it's more of a spirit of sorrow. Because I be feeling sorry for my brothers and my sisters. When they go through trials. And they allow the enemy to silence them. To the point where they ain't got no joy. To the point where they can't praise God. To the point where they can't shout of God's goodness. To the point where they don't want to get on Facebook and witness minister no more. To the point where they don't want to share the gospel no more. I be like, Lord, please help my brother. Please help my sister. Just like Elijah prayed. Lord, give them eyes to see in the spirit. Give them eyes to see that there is an army backing them up. Give them eyes to see that. Because if we understood that we had all of this power, if we understood that as a child of God, we could give God an order concerning the hand, the work of his hands. We can command God to do some things. We can command God to do some things. We can command God to do some things. But the catch is, you have to be in line with the word of God and what it's saying. Because the Bible says that you pray and you ask, but you ask amiss, meaning that you ask wrongly. So some of us, we are bold enough to command God and force God's hand and ask God to do some things, but we're asking for the wrong things. Because the Bible says that the trials and the tribulations that we go through, they are to try us. They are to make us better. So if you are praying, saying, God, take me out of this trial. If you're asking God, take me out of this trial. Then you're asking God for the wrong thing. Because in the end, all of you doing is hurting yourself. Because when you come out of these trials, you're more wiser. You're more stronger. You're more mature in the faith. So you can't go through a trial that God ordained you to go through and say, God, take me out the trial. That's commanding God to do the wrong things. It's all about knowledge. Knowledge comes from reading the word of God. But you can command God to do some things. See, I like Elijah them because Elijah them understood that God told them he was going to give them a land. Elijah them understood that that land that they was promised by God to receive, they understood that that land was going to be given to them, but it was not going to come without a battle. They understood that it was not going to be given to them without a fight from the opposing side. So they didn't go to God and ask God to take them out of the battle. They asked God to strike their enemies with blindness. Woo! So that they can have the upper hand. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you find yourself going through a trial, you don't ask God to take you out of the trial. You ask God to give you peace in the middle of the storm so that you'll have the upper hand. Because if you got peace, then you can't be. Come on now. The Bible says that we have to cast down every hot thing that exalted itself above the knowledge of God, right? We have to cast down all of this stuff that does not line up with the word of God. When you look at the seesaw, y'all know what a seesaw is, right? Find them on the playground. That is a life revelation. The seesaw. This is what God showed me. The seesaw. That thing that go like this. That's a kingdom revelation. That seesaw. So when we was kids... We was playing on God's revelation. We didn't even know it. Somebody might say, what, what you mean by the seesaw? 
is a, is a kingdom revelation. It's a kingdom principle. God said, life is like a seesaw. If you sit on one side, if you put the weight on one side, if you cast something down, if you, put, if you cast that weight down on one side, then another side is lifted higher. And if you cast the weight down on that side, then that got to be lifted higher. God said, if we cast down doubt, then trust is automatically lifted higher. If we cast down fear, boldness is automatically lifted higher. If we cast down anxiety, peace is automatically lifted higher. If we cast down the works of the saint of the devil, if we cast down the works of Satan, God is automatically lifted higher. It's a kingdom principle. If you cast the weight down, something comes up. It's the seesaw effect. Y'all, God said the seesaw is a kingdom principle. When you cast something down, something else is lifted higher every time. If you cast down, if you cast down your faith in God, your doubt has been lifted higher every time. You don't even have to, you don't have, you don't even, you don't even have to try. This is why it's, this is why this analogy is so powerful. Because the energy and the effort does not come. Or does not have to be applied to the lifting up process. The energy and the effort is applied to the casting down process. The energy and the effort is applied to when that person sit on the seesaw and he sit down. That's where the energy and that's where the effort is applied to. But with the lifting up process, you don't have to do nothing to lift it up. You don't have to put no effort into lifting up. We have to put the effort into casting down. Cast down, we have to put the effort, y'all, in the casting down. Cast down every high thing that exalted itself above the knowledge of God. Cast down every imagination. Hallelujah. Instagram, y'all, with me, it's looking a little foggy over there. Look like you got me skipping. Hallelujah. Y'all, with me over there, IG? Let me know if they got y'all clear. It looked like it was skipping over there. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, y'all. IG y'all straight. Hold on, Facebook. We gotta we gotta wait on IG, y'all. We gotta wait on IG. IG waited on y'all. We gotta wait on IG. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at the devil, y'all. Hallelujah. He don't want IG to get this word. I'm about to, I'm about to get off IG and come back. Hold on, y'all. Let me let me let me let me get IG back up and running. Yeah, man, my phone ended up going dead over here, y'all. It's the seesaw effect, y'all. It's the seesaw effect. Hallelujah. We almost done, y'all. We almost done. Let me, I'm about to let the I'm about to let the uh Instagram. The Instagram people get back on, y'all. My phone got the tripping and it messed up the uh service. Bear with me, bear with me, y'all. They bear with y'all. They bear with y'all when Facebook was tripping, so y'all bear with my Instagram family. Straight up. Straight up. I love y'all. But it's the seesaw effect. Hezekiah, God bless you, bro. Yeah, man. That's the Holy Spirit, bro. I promise. That's the Holy Spirit, man. God is so good, bro. You will never, you will never find this stuff in the Bible just reading it, man. Like. This stuff come from prayer. Like, man, anybody can get it. You got to pray. If you pray, God, man, God, man, God will just begin to speak to you. I'm telling you. But y'all, it's the seesaw effect. And you don't have to put no effort 
and lifting up on the seesaw. The effort is put in the casting down. Cast down all of the imaginations, all the high things that exalted itself above the knowledge of God. You have to cast it down. And if you put forth that effort to cast it down, it's going to automatically be lifted up. Hey, it's going to automatically be lifted up. I'm telling you. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. And, I'll, and I'm done after this. I'm done after this. I just had to make sure my Facebook, my uh, Instagram family got in on this one. Because this is what God told me, y'all. We talk about Emmanuel, God is for us, right? Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. It says, Then the Herod secretly sent for the Magi and learned from them the exact time the star had first appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search carefully for the child. This is when Jesus was getting born, y'all. Go search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, report to me so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went their way and behold the star, which they had seen in the east, went on before them, continually leading the way until it came and stood over the place where the young child was. And having been warned by God in a dream not to go back to Herod, the man got left for their own country by another way. Watch this. Matthew chapter 2, 13 through 15. It says, Now when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod intends to search for the child in order to destroy him. So Joseph got up and took the child Oh, I feel chills, man. And his mother, while it was still night, and they left for Egypt. He remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. So, y'all, y'all know this is the story of baby Jesus, right? And he was being born into the manger and all of that good stuff. And it's talked about a wise man followed the star to where Jesus was and hallelujah and the news around the time was that a king was being born and so King Herod got afraid because he heard baby Jesus was a king so he felt threatened like this little baby finna take my place one day so he acted like he wanted to worship Jesus, but in actuality, he wanted to take out the competition. So he wanted to kill baby Jesus because he didn't want nobody to raise, be raised up and challenge his throne, right? So he tried to play a trick on the, on, 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 on the wise man. And he told the wise man, he said, look, when y'all find wherever he at, let me know too, so I can come worship him also. But he was not trying to worship him. He was trying to find his uh, uh, location so that he could kill him. But look, the Bible says that as the wise men was on their journey, and I didn't even know this at first, y'all. I looked over this so many times. I knew that the Lord came to Joseph in a dream. And told him to leave. But I didn't know he came to the wise men. I looked over it so many times. But the Lord came to the wise men in the dream. Before he went to Joseph. Before he went to marry them. He went to the wise. The three wise men. He appeared unto them in the dream. And he told them. He said don't you go back to Egypt. Because the Lord knew where King Herod. The Lord knew what King Herod was thinking in his mind. To kill baby Jesus. So the wise man didn't know. He done told the wise man, just tell me his location. I'm gonna come worship too. So they naive. They ain't they ain't knowing that he got this plot going on. So the Lord appeared to the wise men and he said, Look, don't y'all go back to Egypt. Don't you tell him nothing. 
Don't tell King Herod nothing. Don't you go back and tell him nothing. But then after that, I guess the Lord said, just in case the three wise men decide to be more faithful to King Herod than the command that I gave them, let me go holler at Joseph. Somebody I know is going to obey the voice of God because he was already tried by Mary being impregnated and they never had sex. And an angel appeared to Joseph and spoke to Joseph and Joseph received the instructions and he obeyed. So he said, let me go to Joseph because I know Joseph going to obey. I can't trust the three wise men to not go back to Egypt, even though I just told them not to. They might be more loyal to King, that King Herod. So let me go to Joseph because I know Joseph going to receive these instructions. So he said, Joseph, listen, I told them not to go back, but just in case they go back anyway and tell the king where you at, I need y'all to get up and go to Egypt. And I need y'all to stay there until I tell y'all otherwise. And the Bible said King Herod was so mad, he was so mad that he killed all the children in the land two years old and down. All the male children. Because he wanted to kill Jesus, but God had a few steps ahead of the devil, right? And this is what God showed me about this story. And I wrote it down. I wrote it down because he spoke this to me one day and I was in prayer. And God said, and I want to speak this to y'all. I want you to receive this. God said, there was an attack sent in your direction with your name on it. There was an attack sent in your direction with your name on it. But it had to go back to the pits of hell because the Lord changed your location. He said there was an attack sent in your direction and it had your name on it. But it could not prosper. It was not able to fulfill itself. It had to go back to the pits of hell. Because God changed your location. And as I look back over my life, y'all, I remember times when I used to be sitting in the trap house with my homeboys. And I just fit and I and I ain't no God and I just felt some telling me to leave or I was in the car with some people who had drugs and it and they was and, and, and I just felt some telling me to leave and when I left some of those people ended up going to prison. Those houses, those trap houses ended up getting raided. God changed my location. The enemy had an attack set out for me. Because he didn't want me to be on this side. He didn't want me to be on this live. He didn't want me to be doing this stuff that I do for God. He had an attack with my name on it. But God reversed it. And he changed my location. Some of y'all, the enemy has been trying to take you out. The enemy has been wanting to destroy you. But Emmanuel, he's with you. And every time the enemy try to come in like a flood, God is lifting up a standard. Every time the enemy think he know where he where you at, he think he got you trapped into a corner. He think he got you backed in and he try to back you into that corner. And as soon as he learns out to attack you, God hides you under the cross. God hides you behind his cross. God hides you under his shadow. Many a times you were supposed to die. Many a times you were supposed to be done with, but God changed your location just in the midst of time. And this is what the Holy Spirit said. He said, return to sender. Return to sender. That's what he did in the spirit. Return to sender. This is what the definition means. Return to sender means the address does not exist or is incorrect. The address does not exist or it is incorrect. The address does not exist or it's incorrect. That's what return to sender me. And God told me, he said, 
if you know the story of Joseph, right? When he got sold into slavery and all of that stuff, and then he, he still became king. God said, Joseph's brothers were so shocked when Joseph revealed himself because they thought he was still in slavery. Did y'all hear what I just said? They were shocked when Jesus, when Joseph received, revealed himself as king because they thought he was still in slavery because they sold him into slavery. See, I'm trying to prophesy over somebody tonight that God is changing your location. And the spirit of the Lord said, people are going to be shocked when I reveal this new you because they thought you were still in that place of depression. People are going to be shocked when I reveal this new you that's prosperous because they thought you were still in the place of lack. People are going to be shocked when I reveal this new you who is whole, who is healed because they thought you were still in that place of brokenness. See, people are going to be shocked because they, when they meet you on this elevated level, they're going to think you still in a place, in the place that they met you in. But you serve a God who's able to change your location. Hallelujah. Don't be, don't be discouraged when people can't see your growth because they think you still in that new place after, after in that old place after God to change your location. Don't be mad when people get to talking down and get to hate on you because they thought you were still in that old place but God to change your location. See, some people are trying to speak some word curses and send some word curses your way. But God is changing your location. He's changing it. He's changing it. He's changing it. What that look like? You will never be nothing. You gonna end up just like your daddy. You ain't gonna never do, be able to do nothing. That business, that business ain't gonna prosper. How that person gonna do this? Oh, don't nobody wanna buy them clothes. Don't nobody wanna support that. Man, them glasses were two dollars online. How she gonna sell them glasses for ten dollars? People would get the speaking word curses. Ain't nobody gonna buy that. Ain't nobody gonna try that. Ain't nobody gonna support that. They are sending these word curses, but God is able to change your location. So that everything that's been such your direction that did not come from God, it got to go back to the sender. Return to sender. Return to sender. Because the address is incorrect. The, ad the address, the Bible, the definition of return to sender is when somebody sends something and the address is incorrect. I dare you to prophesy and say, devil, you thought you knew where I was. But let, allow me to reintroduce myself. See, you thought you knew what level I was. I was on, but allow me to reintroduce myself. See, you thought you knew me because we went to high school together, but allow me to reintroduce myself. See, you thought you knew me because you met me in middle school, but allow me to reintroduce myself. See, you thought you knew me because you caught me at a bad time when I was going through some depression, when I was going through some anxiety, when I was going through some fear, when I was going through some doubting, but allow me to reintroduce myself. Because the place that you met me at, I'm no longer at. Come on. Come on, somebody. Anybody can attest to that. The place that you met me at, I'm no longer there. I'm no longer there. Because God has changed my location. He has changed my location. See, the devil thought he was coming right where baby Jesus was. Because, you know, somebody that gave him the drop. But when he got to the scene, he realized that the tomb was empty. Ain't, 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 ain't Good Friday coming up and all that good stuff? Come on. See, when the disciples got there, they realized the tomb was empty. Jesus' location had changed. When King Herod got there to kill him, he realized that, that the, the manger was empty. Jesus' location had changed. See, when the attack arrived, it gets there, they realized that, hold on, this person ain't depressed no more. Location had changed. And I ain't talking about a physical address. I'm talking about when you get into a place with God and you get to operate it from the heavenly realms. You get to operate it from heavenly places. My address to change. I don't operate like this world operate. My, emperor, my, my, my location has changed, y'all. I operate from the heavens. Come on. Watch this. These are two reasons. These are, um, these are a few reasons, y'all, 
why a package can be returned. And I'm finna get off of here after this, cause I'm, a, I'm about to run after this. This is why a package can get returned, y'all. Return to sender. It say the item contains insufficient postage. So if I send you an item, right? If I'm about to mail you an item and I don't have the correct post postage stamp on it, they are going to send it back because I didn't have I didn't have sufficient postage. I didn't have the I didn't have the right postage. Y'all not hearing me. Watch this. If I send you something and I don't have enough money to pay for the postage, you gotta it's gonna get sent back. And this is what God revealed to me about that. The devil will try to accuse you. He will try to send condemnation. But he ain't got enough on you because the blood has declared you innocent. Can I say that again? Return to sender. One of the reasons why a package can get returned to the sender is if they don't have enough postage. The enemy will sit, try to send condemnation your way. Try to convict you. Try to accuse you. But you are declared by the blood of Jesus Christ as innocent. So the devil don't have enough on you. He don't have enough to send condemnation. There is none in Jesus Christ. He don't have a, somebody ought to say, devil, you don't have enough evidence. Stop trying to send condemnation my way. You don't have enough evidence to convict me. See, that's what we got to understand. All he does is accuse us, but he don't have enough evidence because the blood has made us innocent. We have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have been washed by the blood of the lamb. I am innocent. You can't send it to me. Woo. You can't send it my way. You don't have enough on me. You don't have enough on me. Stop receiving that stuff. He don't have enough on you to, to condemn you. He don't have enough on you to send you to hell. He don't got enough evidence. Watch this one right here. It says another reason why a package can get returned is because the addressee, the person you were sending it to, watch this, moved without providing a forwarding address. If I send you a package and you moved and they tell me where you moved to, then the package got to come back to me. Talk to me. So Jesus told them, he said, get up, Jesus. Get up, Joseph. Take baby Jesus. Go to Egypt and don't move until I tell you to. See, this is a lot of our problems. And we have to be careful with announcing stuff prematurely. The Bible say, don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. Stop telling everybody what you finna do. Stop telling everybody what God finna get, what, what God is finna do in your life. Stop telling everybody. Because all you doing is giving them the, the location to where they attack next. But see, if I move and I don't provide you with a forwarding address, in other words, if I move and I don't tell you where I'm moving to, that package gotta go back to you. Come on now. Huh? So if I'm elevating and I don't tell you how I'm elevating, when well, you try to send that doubt and try to send that negativity and all of that hate and all of that envy, that stuff got to go back to you because you don't even know where to send it at. You don't even know where to send it to. Sometimes you got to watch what you announce. Never, never announce anything prematurely. Especially on the internet Because you got witches You got people speaking word curses over, Oh man, we about to write a book <laughs> Oh he about to start a business <laughs> Oh he about to get his real estate license So sometimes you just gotta move You just gotta move You just gotta move And don't tell nobody you got to allow God to elevate you. You ain't got to tell nobody. They just, just allow them to see it. Come on, now. Huh? You got to allow God to expand your territory. You ain't got to tell nobody. Just allow them to see it. Can we operate like, can we just allow them to see the fruit? Can we just allow them to see the fruit? 
Because if we tell them that ex we tell them the exact location, they're gonna send a tax there. Watch this. Watch this. And this is the last reason why a package can be returned. This is the last reason. I got you, I got you home. What's up, Harmony? What's up, man? I got you though. But look, this is the last reason why a package can be uh uh returned to the sender. And this is this is one of the most important ones. How long I've been on here? Man, y'all know I love the priestess word. <laughs> Alright. I'm about to wrap it up. It's say like, the last reason why an item can be returned to sender is if the person it was sent to simply just refused the package. I don't want it. <laughs> That's simple. You sent me the package, it came here, I ain't want it. Send it back. That ain't no that ain't no deep revelation to that, y'all. <laughs> That's it. You sent the package, I didn't want it. I sent it back. That's how we have to do the enemy. You sent condemnation, I didn't want it. I sent it back to you. You tried to send confusion, I didn't want it. I sent it back to you. You tried to send chaos, I didn't want it. I sent it back to you. You tried to send stress and fear and anxiety, I didn't want it. I sent it back to you. In other words, if y'all want to get churchy, I renounced it. You have to renounce the works of the enemy. 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 What does that look like? I've been molested as a child. I grew up in a broken home. I seen my mother be abused. It led me to being in broken relationships. It led me to giving my body to any and anybody any and everybody who said they love me. I slept around to feel loved. Because the enemy stripped me of my innocence at a young age. I was molested. I was raped. But now I renounce what you did all of those years ago and I choose to walk in freedom. I renounce. I renounce it. I renounce the generational curses of my mother getting beat. And I, I, and I choose to have a functioning, God-led marriage. I renounce the generation of curse of coming from a broken family. And I decree and declare over my life that my family will be functional. My, fa my family will be a household of two parents. I renounce the drug addiction. I renounce the cancer that runs in my family. I, re I renounce the high blood pressure that run in my family. I renounce the going in and out of jail that run in my family. Y'all, going in and out of jail was a generational curse of my family. All the men, all the men was in and out of jail. And I was just like them. In and out of juvenile facilities. In and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Got juvenile, got sentenced to juvenile life. God got me out. It. In and out, in and out, in and out. And when I came to God, I renounced it. I said I renounced it. That would not be my life. And when I renounced it, I began to still go to jail. But I wasn't going to jail to be an inmate. I was going to jail to preach that word, y'all. <laughs> I was going to another preach that gospel. So when you renounce this stuff and you say it, it's not welcome. It's not welcome. Fear you're not welcome here because God is with me. God is with me. I'm finna say a prayer, y'all, and I'm finna get off of here. I'm about to pray over this live. I'm about to pray over this live, y'all. I'm finna pray. I'm about to pray over this live. Y'all ready? Anybody got some prayer requests? You can put them in right now. If you believe God moving, you can put them in right now. You can, you can put them in right now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Y'all know I love praying and preaching that word. Sister Hawthorne, I miss you. Kitchen ain't been the same. 
Kitchen ain't been the same since you left, Sister Hawthorne. I miss you. I miss you. Let me pray. I don't want my phone to die. Let me pray, y'all. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, I just thank you for everything that took place tonight. Lord God, I thank you that we are victorious. Lord God, I thank you because I feel, Lord God, that your people came on this live. They received revelation. They received insight, Lord God, that they probably didn't have before. And it's all because of your doing and not mine. Father, it's not by my might of power, but it's simply by your spirit. Lord God, I thank you because... I receive revelation tonight, Father. I thank you, Lord God, just for what you're doing, Lord God, with your people. I thank you, Lord God, that you care about us so much, Lord God, that you just send people, Lord God, and you just use us to encourage one another and edify one another. So, Lord, I pray, hallelujah, that this word follow good ground. Lord God, that this would not just be, uh, I came on the live, I heard a good message, and it carried me over for a few days and I'm back at square one. But no, Lord, this would be a life-changing turning point in the lives of your people. Lord God, I pray that you would just give us the strength to stand still, Lord God. Stand still and know that you are with us. Father and I understand that we are human. Sometimes we get scared. Sometimes we have anxiety. Sometimes we are fearful. Sometimes we just don't understand. I ask, Lord God, that you help our unbelief. I ask, Lord God, that you give us peace in our minds that we don't suffer with overthinking, but we just simply trust that you are with us. Emmanuel, that's who you are, Lord. So, Father, I cover this live in the blood of Jesus. Oh, God, thank you for the strength. Anybody need strength? I speak restoration over this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, y'all, the enemy be so bad. My, 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 my Instagram just be messing up, bruh. Part two, y'all. Part two. Hallelujah. I speak restoration over you, Sister Candace. I speak restoration, y'all. This is the season of restoration. This is the season of restoration. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, I know we read about the story of Noah, Noah and the ark, but just, just think a little bit with me, right? Think a little bit with me, right? And this is, this is not biblical. I'm not saying that the Lord said this. We're just thinking outside the box. Disclaimer. I'm not saying this is biblical. I'm not saying that the Lord said this. I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit said this. We just think it out the box a little bit. This is just a fool for thought right here. So we know about the story of Noah, right? And how that was in the beginning. And how God gave the man of God instructions and told him to build a place or to prepare a place where my people can be safe because of what I'm about to get ready to do. And I just believe that God is the beginning and the end. And just like it was in the beginning, it should be the same way in the end times. And it's going on like that right now. But instead, it's not a boat. And instead, it's not Noah. But we are Noah. We are the ones who God is saying to tell the people that it's going to rain. And that they need to come into the ark of safety. We are the Noah. And just like in those days, people are not going to receive it until it's rain. Y'all, and there's so much going on out here, man. Oh my gosh. I mean, false doctrines. People are more spiritual now. Spiritual now. So much false information. 
People are rebuking with no love. People are loving with no rebuking. The doctrine ain't sound no more, y'all. And if you're not careful, you're not careful, you're going to be rock, rock smooth asleep. You're going to be rock smooth asleep. And in these times, y'all, we got to be guarded up. We got to guard our hearts. We got to be sober-minded. We got to be diligent. We got to stay connected to God because God is always with us. He ain't gone nowhere. Even if you can't feel him, he there. It's something you ain't doing. I, if you can't feel God, it's something you ain't doing. He's there. He's there. I promise you he's there. Pray. You know you ain't praying. Read the word. You know you ain't reading. Worship. You know you ain't been worshiping. Cry in his presence. You know you ain't cried in a long time. You know you ain't cried. You ain't got a good cry in with God in a long time. You need to cry. You need to cry. I cry almost every morning. And if I go, if I go a few days without crying, I say, Lord, I'm, I'm backsliding. You have to be in the presence of God because he is with us. I don't care about no vaccination that they're trying to run, roll out. Y'all see these Satan shoes. Y'all notice, I don't even, I barely watch TV. My wife can tell, I barely watch TV because every, everything, everything you watch is gay. Everything, everything, somebody gay in it. Somebody gay. It's going to be some gay stuff go on and, and whatever you watch. I mean, they'll take it, they'll take it over. They're taking over. They are. They're taking over. They're, they're, they're moving in and they're doing what the devil can do down here. But we have to understand that God is for us. Emmanuel. And if God be for us, if God be for us, if God be for us, who, who can be against us? Who can be against us? Who? Who, y'all? Man, I pray that y'all get y'all some pastors that are truly after God and not with this foolishness. Father, if they're under stuff that's going to lead them to hell and leaders who are going to lead them to hell, remove them and reveal it to them. Man, y'all get in a place where y'all can grow, y'all can learn, and y'all can stay connected to Jesus. Because he coming back. He's coming back. And you know what? People are getting tired of waiting. People are reinventing new, new ways. People don't want to be filled with the Holy Ghost no more. People want to vibrate on a high, high energy level. They don't want to be filled with the Holy Ghost no more. People don't want to have a God. People want to be God now. I'm telling y'all, it's real. I love y'all, man. Y'all have a blessed night. In Jesus' name, hope this bless y'all. Share this with somebody. Share it, share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. Part one, part two. Man, sis, and let me say this, though. If you don't have a church home, a building, right, you do what you have to do to stay connected to God. Because when God first fellowship with man, it was outside of the church. And although the church can equip you, there's no way possible for the church to give you everything that you would need to walk this walk. It's no way possible because we don't go to church every day. It's no way possible. You tell, you tell people to go to church every day, they'll look at you crazy. We only go to church like probably two, three days. And now... We, we do Zoom calls now. So it's no way possible for the church to give you everything. But it's a safe place to be rooted in. But if you don't have a church, stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to somebody who's feeding you. Stay connected to God in worship. Stay con if you don't do nothing else, stay connected to God in worship. And if you stay connected to God in worship, he will lead you. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Y'all be blessed.
until we beat again. Man, I was so happy to get this word out. It's been a long time. Until we beat again, y'all, be blessed in Jesus' name. Yup, 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 yup. Let's go.